Good morning, everybody. Today is Thursday, January 7th, and as most of you know by now, it's a day one. Uh, from the Senate races in Georgia to the Capitol breaching in Washington, D.C., there's a great deal of change in America. But I said something's wrong here, something's really wrong, can't have happened, and we fight. We fight like hell, and if you don't fight like hell, you're not going to have a country anymore. Our exciting adventures and boldest endeavors have not yet begun. My fellow Americans, for our movement, for our children, and for our beloved country, and I say this, despite all that's happened, the best is yet to come. So we're going to, we're going to walk down Pennsylvania Avenue. I love Pennsylvania Avenue. And we're going to the Capitol and we're going to try and give, you know, the Democrats are hopeless. They're never voting for anything. Not even one vote. But we're going to try and give our Republicans the weak ones, because the strong ones don't need any of our help. We're tr going to try and give them the kind of pride and boldness that they need to take back our country. So let's walk down Pennsylvania Avenue. I want to thank you all. President-elect Joe Biden is said to be set to pick Judge Merrick Garland as Attorney General. Garland was picked by President Barack Obama in 2016 for Supreme Court, but was blocked by Republicans. After a co after a contentious race, both Democratic candidates, documentary film executive John Ossoff and Reverend Raphael Warnock, won the runoff election in Georgia, thus giving the Democrats the slimmest control of the Senate with Vice President Kamala Harris as the tie-breaking vote. While Senator Chuck Schumer will be the Senate Majority Leader, there will need to be steps of bipartisanship taken to ensure power sharing occurs. Yesterday, a woman was struck by gunfire from a police officer inside the Capitol building after it was overrun by a pro-Trump horde and later died in the hospital. The chief of the Metropolitan Police Department, Robert J. Conti, told reporters the woman had been shot as plainclothes police confronted the mob. At least 14 Capitol Police officers were injured and three other deaths were reported from the area around the Capitol. Chief Conti, without discussion, said the others seemed to have suffered from other emergencies that resulted in their deaths. Congress was imme immediately set to recess and needed immediate evacuation. The committee meetings have been relocated to Florida and will be later this week. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Ali Mannheimer, a news producer, recently said that this was a per perfect opportunity to get the news right. We thought it was going to be a long day, but pretty boring since the actual proceedings are two hours of debate that is just them arguing back and forth and not making much progress. Um, so we thought it was going to be a pretty boring day uh, until people stormed the Capitol building and tried to take over the country, basically. Um, so when that happens, you kind of just have to scrap your plans and make sure that you're getting content out to the stations who need it that's factual and as quickly as you can, but more importantly, correct. I mean, I think it depends on the cause, like for every story, you should always try to tell both sides. Um, but when it comes to be people breaking into the Capitol, um, for example, you learn that you don't call them protesters at that point. They are a mob and the words you say matter. And so figuring out what you choose that is accurate and fair and tells both sides. During the assault of the Capitol, Joe Biden addressed to the nation. Business. Let me be very clear. The scenes of chaos at the Capitol do not reflect a true America, do not represent who we are. What we're seeing are a small number of extremists dedicated to lawlessness. This is not dissent. It's disorder. It's chaos. It borders on sedition. Republican leader Kevin McCarthy addressed the nation that night. The violence, destruction, and chaos we saw earlier was unacceptable, undemocratic, and un-American. It was the saddest day I've ever had as serving as a member of this institution. Late yesterday evening, after the Capitol building was resecured, the Senate and Congress reconvened to finish their democratic work. 
an electoral process by certifying the Electoral College votes and confirming President-elect Joe Biden's Electoral College victory over President Trump. Pence concluded by stating, the announcement and the state by the vote, President of the United States, shall be deemed a sufficient declaration of the persons elected President and Vice President of the United States, each of the term beginning on the 20th day of January 2021, and shall be entered together with a list of the votes and journals of the Senate of the House of Representatives. Sophia Morris, a former ESML alumni, is watching history unfold in D.C. as of yesterday when protesters stormed the Capitol building after a Trump rally. Uh, a different kind of energy. It's heartbreaking. It's, you know, one of those days where <clears throat> I'm afraid to walk down the street. Um, I live a couple blocks from the Capitol building. You're hearing that some of these protesters are armed. It's, you know, it's startling to be a resident here and live in such a beautiful city that represents democracy, yet there are, you know, people that are protesting in ways in, you know, which kind of tarnishes that a little bit. Yesterday, the Milwaukee Bucks and the Detroit Pistons in the clip shown below during the tip-off took a need to support in social justice and what happened at the rally at Washington. The teams both take a knee in their continuing tribute to social justice. Last night, the Syracuse Orange lost to the Pittsburgh Panthers 63-60. to Alan Griffin in the loss had 15 points eight rebounds and led the team. And Coach Beheim's comments on what happened last night. Coach, I know it was happening, um, obviously, as you were getting ready for the game, but I was just wondering your thoughts on today's events. You know, it's a sad thing. I, I'm just not going to get into politics. Two people canceled their season tickets because I said that I think the election's been solved. <laughs> you know, it's over. And two people, that's how crazy these people are. Some guys had season tickets for 38 years. He canceled them because I said the election is over. And he said, no, it wasn't. It was fixed. And it's sad. Sad for our country. Uh, we're just, uh, just an awful, awful thing. David Eddy, an ESM alumni from the class of 1990, has also seen a lot of change in Washington. Unlike anything I have ever seen, I have, as I said, I've lived in this area for 23 years. I have participated in and observed many, many protests, many, many marches over that time. Um, I have never seen one that has tried to actually take over a federal building. Things have really gotten bad over the past several years in this area and I really hope a lot of people take stock today and turn down the temperature and think about what they say and think about what they do. Um, and on a final note, I just want to say keep in mind that there's still a raging pandemic out there. People are dying like crazy. Please wear a mask. If I weren't at home by myself right now, I would be wearing a mask. Now is a great opportunity, whatever age you are, uh, to get informed and to be involved in what has been going on in our country over the last six months or even uh, what took place yesterday. Um, yep, yeah, so as long as you're willing, as long as you're able to, stay informed, get involved. And from Ty, me, and everyone else here at The Morning Show, have a great day and thanks for watching.